morning, good morning, good morning, Mount Carmel family and friends. I greet you this morning in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will be glad and rejoice therein. This is our call to worship. We are coming out of Psalm 136, verses, seven, verses 1 through 8. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Oh, give thanks unto the God of gods, for his mercy endureth forever. Oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his mercy endureth forever. To him alone who does great wonders, for his mercy endureth forever. Verse 5. To him that by wisdom made the heavens, for his mercy endureth forever. To him that stretched out the earth above the waters, for his mercy endureth forever. Verse 7. To him that made great lights, for his mercy endureth forever. And verse 8. The sun by rule to rule by day, for his mercy endureth forever. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, we come to you this morning in the name of Jesus, excited for all that you have done, all that you are going to do, and all that you are doing right now in this moment. How great thou art. Lord, you are worthy to be praised. We ask you now, Holy Spirit, to move in the midst of this atmosphere. We ask you for your spirit to exude through every means of technology that we are using right now in the name of Jesus so that the soul of every man, every woman, every boy, every girl that is tuned in will be able to be moved by you. We thank you for the gift of salvation that will go forth in this moment. We are so excited about the word of the Lord that is going to come forth today. After the sermon, we will celebrate the Lord's Supper. For those of you that are in the parking lot and you're tuned in listening to us on 101.3 FM, we will provide for you the Lord's Supper. So just be prepared to follow the instructions of our overseer. For those of you that are at home, we are excited to have you celebrate the Lord's Supper with us. So prepare your unleavened or leavened bread. Prepare your cracker. Prepare your juice or your water. Jesus used whatever was available at the time of the culture for the Lord's Supper. So we implore everyone to celebrate in the Lord's Supper with us. And now at this moment, we want to give you an opportunity to continue to worship with us through your giving. So we thank you in advance for the seed that you have planted, whether it be by sending a check to our P.O. box, using our cash app, or going through Giveify. We thank you and we praise you. Lord, we ask in the name of Jesus that you will plant, each, that you will take every seed that has been planted and use it for the nourishment of this ministry financially, that we will not only minister inside of these walls and keep the doors of the church open physically, but we thank you for the seed that will go forth in a fruitful harvest and be able to minister to the surrounding communities and the people that you have allowed us to minister to financially. As you prepare your off as you have prepared your offering and we begin to close out this moment of prayer, I ask that you just speak right now into the atmosphere and say unto God, I am a cheerful giver. I plant good seed and good soil, and I'm watching the wondrous works of God. And now, at this moment, we will present to you our overseer, our, our pastor, overseer, Leon Rogers, who will be bringing forth the word in Jesus' name. Good morning, good morning to everyone. We're just so excited for each and every one of you. God is truly good and he's wonderful and we're just so thankful for each and every one of you. Amen. I'm just going to ask the musician to continue to play that. Amen. Oh yeah. I'm expecting great things. Oh, I'm expecting great things. Yes, I'm expecting great things. Oh, great things. 
take the first four verses, share with you something that uh, really impacted me over this past week. We are just thankful for what God has been doing. Again, Psalm 72, Psalm 72, verse one through four. It says, give the king thy judgments, O God, and thy righteousness unto the king's son. He shall judge thy people with righteousness and thy poor with judgment. The mountains shall bring peace to the people and the little hills by righteousness. And then finally, verse four, he shall judge the poor of the people. He shall save the children of the needy and shall break in pieces the oppressor. Amen. Today, just for a topic, getting in good trouble. Getting in good trouble. I am been uh, overwhelmed this past week. I had spent time watching the memorial services for Congressman John Lewis on this past Thursday, July the 30th. And he was somebody that was known for his uh, work on the civil rights. I was able as a young man to cross over the um, Edmund Pettus Bridge in Selma, Alabama, where my folks are from. Uh, in Alabama, about 40 miles away. And it was interesting just to hear during the, the service, the former president, the Honorable Barack Obama, shared a wonderful overview of the Congressman Lewis, who was, did such great job in his uh, fight for civil rights. During the eulogy, uh, Barack Obama shared something that uh, John Lewis had shared with us. He said, get in good trouble, necessary trouble, and help redeem the souls of America. John Lewis also had a speech and was a young man at the time in the 60s, walking with the wind, a memoir of the movement. Brother Lewis shared the following statement. I believe in freedom of speech, but I also believe that we have an obligation to condemn speech that is racist, bigoted, anti-Semitic, or hateful. One of the things while I was watching 
uh, the funeral uh, service, and I should call it a homegoing service, uh, the three presidents, former presidents, got up. First, the Honorable George Bush, then the Honorable Bill Clinton, and then finally, as I call him, Bishop Barack Obama got up. And one of the things that I found that all of them did, they all reference uh, the biblical word from God. Each one of them shared how that in uh, this situation that it's time for us to stand above and beloved, wrath and rage are a predictable response in the wake of oppression. When provocation reaches a seemingly uh, unalterable height, rage, wrath becomes obvious uh, earthly partners for survival. See, this has been the case throughout the ages, from ancient times to the 21st century, because oppression breeds contempt. I found the Romans were oppressive and they bred disrespect on the Jewish people. Attila the Hun breed and the dislike of Western Europe. Ivan the Terrible breed the disapproval of the Russian people. Uh, Hitler breed the contempt of the Jewish people and minorities and the world community. And then I find the U.S. government breed the hatred of Native Americans and African Americans. Bad bosses have breed contempt among their employees. I want you to know, beloved, that oppression or denomination, uh, the denomination breeds contempt and disrespect. What other uh, responses can you expect when your oppressors have their knees on your neck? I want you to know, Christians, what can we do? Can we fight back? Is there such a thing as righteous indignation? Ah, there are times I ask the question, can God's people find favor with God when they rise up against oppression? And I found the answer to be yes. Yes, in the lesson today, King David had, uh, had dealt with such opposition, but yet David believed in his heart that God was still in control. Yeah, that is why in Psalms 27, he says, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked came upon me to eat up my flesh, my enemies and my foes, they stumbled and fell. See, David entrusted his life in a greater power than his own. I recall reading when Jesus visited the temple at Jerusalem, he saw the money changers had oppressed the worshipers by turning the outer court huh, of the temple into a den of thieves. So Jesus met the oppressors by tipping over their tables and declared, shall God's house be a house for thieves? I'm here to tell you, beloved, opposition warrants a response. Oppressed people should never be idle in the response to their oppressors. Yeah, change happens when we stand against our enemies, whether they be foreign or domestic. What we need to fight oppression is godly leadership. Yes, all leadership, I found, is not created equal. Some leaders seek to influence through negative means. This type of ungodly leadership seeks change without imposing morality. We are watching in real time our government leadership structure that uh, governs with lies and invokes manipulation and out and out infernal fire that creates a forest fire of fear 
we are watching an administration that calls upon brute force to suppress peaceful protests. We are looking and seeing uh, their measure its success based on uh, reality ratings. We're looking, watching this administration tout a Bible without ever opening it. Yeah. Beloved, I want to share with you what godly leadership looks like in the wake of oppression. Godly leadership knows it must read the Bible before it can heed the Bible. Godly leadership avoids evil provocation that leads to rebellion. Godly leadership hears and heeds the moral voice of God in matters of justice. One of the things that I saw on Thursday was that all three presidents, they're all quoted from the Bible and we're all honoring the standards of the Bible. When it comes to godly leadership, it is not just about the ratings and the results. Honorable leaders dressed in Christ-like character use moral methods to effect change. When you look at the text out of Psalm 72, the psalmist offered a prayer for the new leadership. King Solomon was about to ascend to the throne. The prayers from King David had ended because David now rests with the forefathers. Ah, the psalmist knows that only the God can give Solomon the wisdom and the strength. He needs to move the people forward in faith. And in his prayers ah, for the new leader, the psalmist spells out the qualities that every good leader ought to have. Well, the first uh, uh, attribute that a godly leader should have, godly leaders are righteous in their character. Look at verse 2. He says, he shall judge thy people with righteousness. Later on in the seventh verse, he says, fairness and equality, the hallmarks of righteousness will cause new leaders and their people to flourish. I want you to know hmm, that God appoints leadership and he awards the godly leaders huh, with a heart open to receive moral wisdom. Abraham heard God and left Ur to follow after the one true and all wise God. <laughs> Moses heard God and he told the Hebrew oppressors huh, to let my people go. Huh? Gideon huh, heard God huh, and the Midianites huh, turned their swords on each other. Huh? Joshua huh, heard the Lord huh, and they said the walls huh, of Jericho huh, came tumbling down. Huh? These men understood huh, their life is not a reality show. Huh? There was no script of their own. Huh? They simply followed uh, the voice of God. Uh, that is what a godly leader does. Uh, not take actions for the purpose of self-gratification, but instead seek to glorify God in all that he does. Uh, can I get a witness? Uh, that Apostle Paul said, uh, 1 Corinthians 10.31 so whether you eat or drink, huh, whatever you do, huh, do it for the glory of God. Huh. Can I get a witness? Huh. If I had huh, to put it in other words, huh, anything worth doing huh, is worth doing right. Huh. Thank you, Lord. Huh. I wanted a day. Huh. Are you following huh, God's wisdom? Huh. Well, my second point, uh, the psalmist said uh, that a godly leaders uh, are peaceful loving. Uh, verse 3 says, uh, the mountains uh, shall bring peace uh, to the people. Uh, the psalmist was praying uh, for the blessing of peace and prosperity for God's people. Uh, you need to know uh, it's not enough uh, for your desire for peace, uh, our actions uh, ought to match up uh, 
with our desires. Uh, if you want peace, uh, you ought to seek to save uh, those that are oppressed. Uh, can I get a witness? Uh, peace uh, escapes us uh, when we choose leaders uh, who are not peaceful, loving themselves. Uh, humble rather than arrogant. Uh, Self-seeking rather than selfish, uh, productive rather than destructive. Uh, we need leaders today uh, that will pray for God's wisdom. Uh, I remember uh, out of number six, uh, starting at verse 24, uh, they were praying, uh, the Lord bless thee, uh, the Lord keep thee, uh, the Lord make your face shine uh, upon thee. Uh, and be gracious uh, unto them. Uh, the Lord lift up his countenance uh, upon them uh, and gave them peace. Uh, right now, uh, I want you to know uh, that a godly leader uh, shall be rooted uh, in peace. Uh, well, uh, my last point uh, is that a godly leader uh, cares about other folk. Uh, the farmer says uh, in verse 4, uh, he shall judge uh, the poor of the people. Uh, he shall save uh, the children of the needy, uh, shall break in pieces uh, the oppressor. Uh, I'm here to tell you today uh, that a godly leader uh, is a concern uh, about oppression, uh, concern uh, about the poor. Uh, I was watching this morning uh, how the government was fussing uh, over $600. Uh, I want you to know uh, that when they passed the tax bill uh, just a few years ago, uh, it did not incorporate us, uh, but it incorporated uh, the rich folk, uh, the big companies. Uh, I'm here to tell you uh, if they're fighting uh, over $600, uh, there's a problem uh, in the White House. Uh, I'm here to tell you uh, if the poor are needy, uh, the president need to take care of them. Uh, verse 12 uh, of Psalm 72, uh, he says he shall deliver uh, the needy. Uh, he shall spare uh, the poor. Uh, he shall redeem uh, from the deceit uh, and violence. Uh, I'm here to tell you, uh, beloved, today, uh, a godly leader, uh, thanks the blood of his people, uh, are precious. Uh, I'm here to share with you, uh, a godly leader understands uh, that he has a responsibility beyond himself. Uh, he understands his actions, uh, his tweets, uh, his boosts, uh, his blogs, uh, his words uh, can impact the world. Uh, oh Lord, uh, your actions uh, disclose who you really are. Uh, thank you Lord. Uh, a godly leader uh, should welcome all strangers uh, and not Build a wall. Uh, a godly leader uh, suffers all the children uh, and don't put them in cages. Uh, a godly leader uh, seeks justice for all people and not say uh, there's good on both sides. Uh, I'm here to tell you uh, the apostle Paul says uh, in 1 Corinthians 11. Uh, first verse, uh, be imitators of me uh, as I'm of Christ. Uh, I'm here to tell you uh, that a godly leader uh, is an intimate imitator of Christ. Uh, thank you, Lord. Uh, a godly leader uh, always grows, uh, always looks uh, for the best way to serve the people. Thank you, Father. Uh, well, we must be careful uh, not to heat all the wrath uh, on one person.
person. Uh, it takes a systemic process uh, to do what he's doing. Uh, the Senate majority is uh, unwilling to reign uh, in a lawlessness uh, of our president uh, is a perfect example. Uh, but love, uh, I'm not here uh, to make a political speech, uh, but I'm here to tell you uh, the battle is raging, uh, but I found in the word of God, uh, the battle's not mine, uh, the battle is the Lord's. Uh, why uh, are the black folk, uh, why uh, is the black community mad? Uh, why uh, are the black people angry? Uh, well, let me share with you a few thoughts. Uh, black Americans uh, are angry because uh, in 1919, uh, they were chained, uh, brought to this shores uh, of America as chattel. Uh, black folks are angry uh, because they were forced uh, to build the democratic nation. Uh, but without uh, the remuneration uh, of 40 acres and a mule. Uh, black folk uh, are angry today uh, because after uh, the Emancipation Proclamation, uh, the white folks made up Jim Crow. Uh, and Jim Crow, uh, right now, uh, they're trying to bring it back. Uh, and they call it under the guise uh, of making America great again. Uh, black folk uh, are angry uh, because after uh, passing uh, the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendments, uh, black equal rights, voting rights, uh, they created a black code, uh, a segregation law uh, that helped erase uh, all of our freedoms uh, and in parts of this country uh, they still practice uh, black folk uh, are angry today uh, because prisons uh, have become the preferred means uh, of black curtailment uh, black folk uh, are angry uh, because Emmett Till uh, was murdered uh, for whistling at a white girl uh, black Folk, uh, I'm angry uh, because Mega Evans, uh, the head of the Mississippi NCAA, uh, CP, uh, was murdered in his driveway. Uh, black folk uh, are still angry uh, because at the 16th Street uh, Baptist Church uh, in September 1963, uh, four young black girls uh, were killed. Uh, by the racially motivated, uh, attacked by the Ku Klux Klan. Uh, black folk uh, are angry uh, because after uh, the church burning, uh, uh, Virgil Lamar Ware uh, was walking down the street, uh, riding his bike, uh, was killed uh, because of two little white boys uh, had been to a segregation meeting uh, and they wanted to scare him, uh, but they killed him. Uh, but that ain't the end of the story. Uh, they took the two little white boys uh, into the court uh, of an all white jury. Uh, they said guilty, uh, not on first degree, uh, but on second degree murder. Uh, Gave him six months uh, of, uh, in jail, uh, but the judge stood up, uh, said, no, uh, don't send him to jail, uh, just give him two years of probation. Uh, I'm here to tell you, uh, black folk are angry because Alton Sterling, uh, Dante Parker, Renisha McBride, uh, Sandra Bland, uh, Tyvon Martin, uh, Michael Brown, uh, Freddie Gray, uh, Philanto uh, Castile, uh, Eric Gardner, uh, Tamar Wright, uh, Breonna Taylor, uh, Admon Aubrey, uh, George Flood, uh, and so many more uh, were killed uh, by executions, uh, by murderers, uh, with authority over them. 
him. Huh. Well, huh, beloved, huh, I stopped by to tell you, huh, God has had enough huh, of the insolence. Huh. He's had enough huh, of the indifference. Huh. God has had enough huh, of the inequity huh, and of the inequality. Huh. God has had enough huh, of the tweeted huh, irrelevancy huh, and human immaturity. Huh. God has had enough huh, of a leader's immorality huh, and just unjust authority. Huh. God has had enough huh, of the government's irresponsibility and abstinence huh, majority. Huh. God is telling us huh, that we gotta get in huh, good trouble. Huh. I don't know about you, huh, but I heard Jesus huh, came down the 42 generation, huh, came on the earth, huh, talking about the kingdom of God is at hand. That's good trouble, huh? And good trouble, huh? Went to the cross in Calvary, huh? They tried to kill him, but he gave up his life, huh? Went in a bar or two, huh? But he got up, he got up with all power. I'm here today to tell you, huh? That God is telling us, prepare yourself. Cause God will send more plagues, not just coronavirus, not just racism, huh? not just poverty, huh? but God will send huh? more plagues huh? if huh? the oppressor does not huh? let my people go. Huh? If the oppressor huh? does not hear God's words, huh? the walls of Jericho, huh? will fall huh? if the oppressor does not hear huh? they're gonna fight each other huh? trust God with all your heart lean not unto your own understanding in all your ways acknowledge the Lord and he will I declare he will direct your path Getting in good trouble. That's what we need to do. Fight oppression. Tell him he ain't no right. He's not right. And we still need to pray on him. Because he's still a frail human being. But I'm here to tell you, I may need armor bearers today after this message. But y'all take up my slack. Amen. I want you to know God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask of Him, according to the power that works in us. God is wonderful, and God will see you through. Let us bow. Gracious God, thank you for making a way for good things. Father, there are many of us that are being oppressed. Some of us are trying to make a way out of no way. But Father, we need to turn to the hills from which cometh our help. Our help comes from you, Lord, the one that made heaven and earth. Father, we love you. We thank you for all that you've done, all that you're doing, and for the things to come. Father, I ask that you would move upon this nation. Wake us up, Lord. Help us to understand that we're not in this by ourselves. Father, as the psalmist pray, Father, give us a loving heart. Give us a caring heart. Give us the purpose to understand how to fight. Father, we don't want to lay still. We want you to be with us. And we know that if you're with us, everything will be all right. Father, the oppressor is wrong. They're trying to tell us that we're not worthy. The oppressor looks at us one day, tell us that he cares about us. The oppressor even shared this week, Father, he troubled my soul, that he said he did more for the black folk than Obama ever did in his four years. 
failures. Father, that's the kind of lies that the oppressor is throwing at us today. But Father, we ask you help us to prepare for that death angel that's coming over, for that transitional angel that is going to ride by. Father, we thank you for the love of Jesus, thanking you for the gift of your spirit. Father, we know that all things work together for them that love God, to them that are called according to his purpose. Father, help us, those that are on the line today. Father, help us about Carmelites. Help us, Father, to know that we have the favor of the Lord upon us. Father, we just trust you like David did, that everything's going to be all right. Help us, Father, like Solomon went to the Lord. Ask, could ask him anything, but he asked for wisdom to lead the people. Father, in the name of Jesus, help us with your wisdom, with your knowledge, your understanding, so that we may overcome the wiles of the devil. Lord, we love you. We thank you for all that you're doing in our lives. Father, we thank you. Help us to make a difference in this world. Help us, Lord, that you set your ways before us. Help us, Father, that if we need a change heart, if we need to change our way, and Lord, that word is somewhat rhetorical because we all need you to change us. Help us now so that we might be changed. Help us to look to the hills from whence cometh our help. Father, our help comes from one who made heaven and earth. We thank you. Father, we're going to lay our petitions at the cross. Father, we're not going to pick it up. We practice picking them back up. But Lord, we're going to leave them at the altar. We're going to leave them at the cross. Father, where I first saw the light, burdens of my heart, it'll roll away. It was there by faith I received my sight. And now, I'm happy all the days. Father, we thank you. Help us to get in good trouble, to bless those around us. Help those that are in trouble. Help those that are trying to make it. Help us, Father, to be more purposeful about how we want to live, how we want to care, how we want to understand one another. Help us, Father, to overcome our insufficiencies. Help us, Father. Father, we lay all our cares on the altar of your love. In Jesus the Christ's name, we do pray. Somebody ought to text, amen. Somebody ought to say, so be it. Somebody ought to say, hallelujah for the Lamb. Thank you, Father, for this day. Amen. 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 At this time, we have our communion, amen. Amen. And we're going to transition. For those of you that need to leave, we thank you for being with us today. And God has been truly good to us. And we're just so thankful for what God is doing for us on a daily basis. But if you are one that believes in God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, we ask that you would stay on. We won't be long, but we want to talk and share with you uh, the Lord's Supper. We honor two ordinances here at Mount Carmel. Uh, we honor uh, the ordinance of, of the baptism where we go fully immersed, not saying that that's when you become uh, free from sin, but it is an example to the world that we're making a conscientious effort to make a change in our lives. Then the second ordinance is the Lord's Supper. We don't call it communion because we do not believe that the cup is the real blood and the bread is the real body, but we believe in it being a symbol, symbolic of what it is that Christ did on the cross at Calvary. So please, we take this moment now to uh, look at the Lord's Supper as a time to memorialize our Savior, uh, the death by which the atonement of our 
sins have been restored. He takes it away. He covers it with the blood of Jesus. Those who have accepted Jesus Christ as a personal Savior, uh, we ask that you would participate in the service. Uh, and today, the bread represents the body of Jesus, the bread of life. Christ lives in us through the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, making us a part of the unified body of Christ. We are so thankful for what God has done. Amen. And uh, we are asking, uh, asking each of you that if you have bread, if you have wine, if you have a cup, if you don't have that, that's fine. Get some water, get some crackers, whatever you have, and you can participate in this. We are so thankful for what God has done for us. Drinking of the fruit of the vine acknowledges the blood that covers our lives. I've sinned, and I've been a real sinner. Amen. I feel like uh, the chief of sinners, as Paul says. But when God the Father sees us, he sees the evidence of his son on our lives. And for that, I say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father for not seeing all of the faults that I've done, all of the trickery that I've done in my life. The Bible tells us there is only one way to heaven. Out of John 14, the gospel according to John 14, chapter 6, verse, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. For we all have sinned, we all fall short of the glory of God and are justified freely by his grace through the redemption of the uh, of that came by Jesus Christ that's out of Romans 3 23 through 3, 24 and then we just need to realize we are not perfect you ought to say that out loud we are not perfect we are not perfect we need to believe that Jesus Christ died for us he was buried rose from the dead he came back for his church hallelujah God wants us to be willing to turn from sin, that's called repentance. We repent and we ask God to forgive us of our sins. One of our practices we hear, we repeat together three times, Lord, forgive me of our sins. Lord, forgive me of my sins. Lord, forgive me of my sins. And we do that three times. So I'm gonna ask you, uh, those of you online, those of you that are on the conference call at this time, and those that are here in the church, if you would repeat with us, uh, repeat after me, Lord, Forgive me of my sins. Lord, forgive me of my sins. Amen. Just take a pause there. This is a pause break. In the Bible, in the, in the psalmist, it would set, call it Selah. And Selah was just a, a pause break where you take a moment just to in, encourage and in, embrace what you just said. So for the third time, let's say it together. Lord, Forgive me of my sins. Amen. Let us bow. Lord, we pray for the cup of thanksgiving. For the blood of Jesus was shed on the hill at Calvary for the remission of our sins. Dear God, we also pray for the bread of life as a symbol of Christ's body given for us. Lord, we thank you for the sacrifice of your son, Jesus, thanking you for his humility for his willingness to show us the way. Father, we thank you for inviting us to share in this suffering that we might also share in the glory. Lord, we thank you also for uh, this cup, uh, the blood that was shed on the healing Calvary for the remission of our sins. Thank God for the sacrificial lamb of Jesus on that cross. He died as the suffering lamb. But Lord, when he got up, he got up as the Lion of Judah. Lord, we thank you, Lord Jesus, reconciling us to you. Father, for it's in Jesus Christ's name that we do pray. Amen, amen, amen. All right, out of Matthew's Gospel, the 26th chapter, beginning at 26th verse, says, as they were eating, Jesus took the bread, blessed it, and he broke it. He gave it to his disciples to eat. Let us all eat together. Amen. Then the Lord took the cup, gave thanks, and he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. Let us all drink together. Amen. 
Amen. For this is the blood of the New Testament, which is shed for the remission of sins. But I say unto you, I will not henceforth drink of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it with you in my Father's kingdom. And they had sung a hymn. Then they went out into the Mount of Olives. Amen. We are just so thankful that you joined us today. God has been so good, so awesome for all that he has done. Amen. We are just so thankful. Out of Numbers 6, 24, 26. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his confidence upon you and give you peace. Hallelujah for the Lamb. Stay safe. Remain healthy. See you next week by the grace of God. Amen. Love you and ain't nothing you can do about it. God bless you. Thank you.